Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. I bring the generic Goblin noise! Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you know that Flipside Gaming will be giving away a box of War of the Sparks. From April 1st through May 6th, any order that's over $10 or more will get you entered to win. One entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Today's game is filmed at Platinum Star Games, and once again, Joe is back playing his Iris deck. He keeps a Boros Garrison, Mizium Mortars, Two Planes, Blasphemous Act, and Hero of Oxid Ridge. Steve is playing his Voral deck, keeping an Evolutionary Leap, Momentous Fall, Island, Thought Vessel, Opal Palace, Forest, and Fathom Mage. John has taken one of the comments from an older video and made a special Atraxa deck just for you. He's playing Cyclonic Rift, Sculpting Steel, Prototype Portal, Farseek, Island, and Kadama's Reach. Last but not least, we have Dom, who's new to the channel, joining us, and he's playing his Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. He keeps a Plains, Flooded Strand, Dusk, Island, Silent Gravestone, and Counterspell. Joe wins the die roll and starts us off. Joe plays a Plains and passes. Dom plays an Island and he casts Silent Gravestone. Steve plays an Opal Palace, passing. John plays an Island and passes back to Joe. Joe plays a Mountain and passes. Dom plays a Plains and he casts a Persistent Petitioner. Steve plays a Forest and out comes a Thought Vessel. John draws and plays a Lanoir Wastes taking one to help cast Farseek. He goes to find a breeding pool, and he passes. Joe plays a Plains, and passes. Dom plays a Flooded Strand, passing to Steve. Steve plays an Island, and he brings out Voril using his Opal Palace. He puts a plus one plus one counter on his commander, and he passes to John. John plays an Atacar Waste as his land for turn, and he casts Kadama's Reach, grabbing a basic for the field, and one for his hand. Joe plays his third Plains, and brings out Iris. At the end of turn, Dom cracks his strand, taking one to find a basic. He then mills John for one with his petitioner and starts his turn. Dom plays a Plains, and he casts his commander, Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. Steve plays a Forest, and he casts a Fathom Mage in his main phase. John plays a Plains, and loses one life from his Lanoir Waste to help cast a Traxa. Joe plays a Gyre Reach Sanitarium as his land for turn, one of my favorite new lands in a long time, and he passes turn. Dom plays a Tapped Hollowed Fountain, and he casts Herald's Horn. He then drops a Relic of Progenitus before passing to Steve. Steve plays another Forest, and he drops an Evolutionary Leap. He thinks about attacking, but passes to John. For John's turn, he swings a Trax at Joe for 4, gaining 4. At the end of turn, Joe activates his Sanitarium, making everyone draw and then discard one. Joe floats one white and bounces his planes back to his hand as he plays a Boros Garrison. He wipes the board with a Blasphemous Act, which surprisingly resolves considering there are three blue players at the table. At the end of turn, Dom has John exile a card from his graveyard with the Relic. Dom plays an Island for his turn, and he recasts his commander before passing. Steve plays another Forest, and he recasts Voril, who comes in this time with two plus one plus one counters thanks to the Opal Palace. John plays a tapped Hollowed Fountain, and passes. Joe replays his planes, and suspends a Wheel of Fate. We then see an Angel of Jubilation hit the field, and at the end of turn, Dom has Joe exile a card from his graveyard. Dom draws and casts two Persistent Petitioners in his main phase, needing only to pay one blue for each. He then passes to Steve. Steve plays a Soul Ring in his main phase, and he casts a Primordial Hydra, paying 4 into its X cost. Dawn draws, and he drops a doubling season before passing. Joe removes a Suspend counter, and he plays a Plains. He casts a Hero of Oxid Ridge, and he moves to combat. His commander is now active, and he swings everything at John. The hero's battle cry triggers, and John takes 18 damage, 9 of which is commander. At the end of turn, Dom has Joe exile a card with his relic. Dom reveals a Persistent Petitioner to his Horn Trigger and puts it to hand. He draws and casts it in his main phase. 
He then cast Dusk, wiping away all but his side of the board, and he passed to Steve. Steve draws, and has enough to recast Voril for a third time, using the Opal Palace once more, and having his commander come in with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters this time. John plays a Polluted Delta, cracking it and taking 1 to find a tap watery grave. He then casts a Prototype Portal, and imprints a Lux Cannon to it. He then passes to Joe. Joe plays a Command Tower, and he casts Audric in his main phase, and he remembers to remove a Suspend counter as he passes. Dom reveals a persistent petitioner from the horn, and draws for turn. He plays a planes, and uses the aftermath half of Dusk, Dawn, to return two of his petitioners. He then plays three petitioners from his hand, and he passes turn. Steve draws, and plays a forest. He taps out again, but this time casts a Genesis Hydra. He picks the Deep Glow Skate as the card he casts, but unfortunately incorrectly doubles the counters on the Hydra, as the Skate comes in before the Hydra does. John draws and makes a token copy of the Lux Cannon by activating his prototype portal. The token is doubled thanks to doubling season. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Joe activates his Guy Reach Sanitarium. Joe plays a Plains, and he casts Archetype of Aggression. He passes, and at the end of turn, Dom has Joe exile a card from his graveyard, and then taps some petitioners to mill John for 12. Dom doesn't hit a creature that shares a type, and just draws for turn. He activates the second half of the Relic's ability, exiling all graveyards, and drawing a card. Dom then casts another Petitioner, and he passes turn. Steve draws and doubles the counter on his Hydra with Voril's ability. He then drops a Mana Gorger Hydra, and moves to combat. He swings the Genesis Hydra at Dom, who blocks it with one of his Petitioners, and then taps 4 to mill John for 12. Steve passes, and at the end of turn, John activates his Lux Cannons to put one charge counter on it, which gets doubled. John draws, and plays a Plains. He makes another two cannons in his main phase, and he casts Tezzeret's Gambit. He taps his two new cannons, and then proliferates to give all of his cannons a whopping four counters. He also draws two cards, which is kind of secondary to what he's doing. John has finished charging all of his lasers, and passes to Joe, who activates Guy Reach once more at the end of turn. Joe removes the last suspend counter from Wheel of Fate, and Dom casts a Mystical Tutor in response to the wheel hitting the stack. Dom goes to find an instant or a sorcery, while the rest of the table discards their hand, and draws 7. Joe then plays a mountain as his land for turn, and Dom settles on a windfall before drawing his 7. Joe then casts Commander Sphere, and Joe then also casts a Victory's Herald, and then Steve remembers to add more counters to his Hydra. Moving to combat, Joe's Audric triggers, giving all of his creatures a big bowl of keyword soup. He swings his team at John, because two active Lux Cannons is scary enough, so 4 next turn is way too much. Before damage is dealt, John taps the two untapped cannons and blows up two of Dom's lands. Joe then passes, and at the end of turn, Dom taps four of his advisors to mill Joe for 12. Dom reveals another persistent petitioner off the top with his herald's horn trigger, and draws for turn. He plays an island, and he casts a petitioner, and then a soul ring. He then casts another petitioner, and Steve can't keep up with the counters on his hydra. Dom then casts a windfall, and the table discard their hand and draws equal to the largest, which is 7. He then passes to Steve. Steve plays an island for his turn, and he casts his own doubling season in his main phase. He then uses Voril to double the counters on his Matagorger Hydra, and swings it at Dom. Dom decides to block the Hydra with one of his petitioners, and then activates its ability to mill Steve for 1. He stops 3 damage, and then takes 15. John untaps and draws for turn, with two of his Lux Cannons primed and ready. He pays 5 to cast a Wrath of God, and with a spell on the stack, Dom has John mill 12 twice by tapping two sets of four advisors. Steve also sacrifices the Genesis Hydra to Evolutionary Leap, and reveals until he hits a Cure's Follower. John then casts a Winding Constrictor, and taps two of his cannons, adding four counters to them by tapping it once. Now if only he had an Unwinding Clock. John then removes counters from one of his other cannons to blow up the Guy Reach Sanitarium, and he passes to Joe. Joe plays a mountain and taps out, multi-kicking Marshall's Anthem four times and brings back four creatures. He grabs the Herald, Audric, Combat Celebrant, and Aurelia. At the beginning of the combat step, John activates his last untapped Lux Cannon to blow up Aurelia. Joe decides to respond in kind, swinging Iris at John, who dies to commander damage, and Joe then passes. On Dom's upkeep, he casts an Enlightened Tutor to go and find an artifact or an enchantment of his choice. He grabs a Thrumming Stone and puts it on top. 
he moves to his main phase, playing an island, and casts a serum visions, drawing a card, and scrying two. He then passes, presumably due to a lack of persistent partitioners in hand. Steve casts a spike weaver in his main phase, and gains twice the counters it normally would because of the doubling season. He then drops a cold-eyed selkie, and Akira's follower, passing to Joe, and suggesting that Joe doesn't attack him. Joe casts a Cyclops Gladiator in his main phase, and then moves to combat. He swings everything at Dom, exerting the Celebrant to gain another combat step, and has his creatures gain just about every keyword, dealing 22 damage and gaining 22 life. He then untaps his creatures, and goes once more at Dom to finish him off. Before the damage is done, Dom cracks his Silent Gravestone to exile graveyards and draw a card. Dom dies, and Joe gains another 22 life. Joe then makes a bold move as he casts Nullspine Dragon, drawing 44 cards in a Boros-colored deck. He checks how many cards are left in his library, and we find out it's 6. Joe then really gets to shape his hand as he discards down to 7. Steve draws for turn and counts up his mana. He has exactly enough to cast a Blue Sun Zenith, where X is exactly 6, and Joe concedes the game to Steve since he knows he's going to die on his draw step. Game review time. So, I love that ending. I think Joe did the right thing going deep to draw some sweet cards, because he did find an answer to the Spike Weaver, which would have prevented him from winning normally. Unfortunately, he didn't know that Steve had the Blue Sun Zenith in his hand, which was the perfect answer. I typically don't ask players to build specific decks based around comments, but John saw this in one of the older videos and just had to make it. He said the Lux Cannon token deck was a lot of fun, but a bit slow, and he wasn't too sure that he'd keep it around. I was happy to meet Dom, and even happier still when he told me he had a persistent petitioner's deck ready to go. Had he been able to resolve the Thrumming Stone followed by a petitioner, I think he would have had the game in the bag. It's cool to see them continuing to design things like Relentless Rats in different colors and with different abilities, so I look forward to seeing the red, green, and white variants. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.